the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to the uh, sixth Sunday of uh, Easter. Will you please turn your Bible to uh, John chapter 14, uh, verse uh, 15, and verse uh, 21. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Verse 21, whoever, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to thee, O Lord, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. A driver was stopped by a traffic officer. And he asked him, uh, Sir, do you know the, the offence that uh, he had committed? And the man said, uh, smilingly, said, uh, Yeah, the light had turned red. Then the officer asked him, uh, You know, it's a red, you should have stopped. He said, I know, but uh, how, then how come you did not stop? He said, I saw the light, but I did not see you. Oh, so the uh, traffic officer said, Now you see me. So he gave him a, 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 a ticket. Now it's one thing to know the law. It's entirely another thing to uh, follow the law, obey the law. Likewise, uh, it is one thing to say, I love Jesus. Today there are a lot of people who uh, say, I love Jesus. It's not only uh, Christians. A lot of uh, non-Christians have great respect for Jesus. They love Jesus. They love some of the teachings of uh, Jesus. They love Jesus. And as Christians, uh, when we come into the church, uh, in our worship, we express our love for Jesus. And sometimes we can just see how people uh, demonstrate their love. Paul Jesus. It is one thing to say, praise God. I, I must say praise God. When you come to church uh, with the goal to, uh, to worship, praise God. But uh, Christianity is not about uh, demonstrating our love for God within the four walls of the church. Christianity is about uh, keeping the command of Jesus not only within the four walls of the church, also when we are in our home, when we in our working place. Now, wherever we are, we should be seen as people who keep the commands of Jesus. And uh, sometimes it can be very challenging. When people, when you try to uh, keep the commands of Jesus, sometimes people can uh, humiliate. People can take, even take advantage of us because they might see us as being uh, humble, forgiving, accommodating, persevering, patient. It can be very challenging. But the Bible is very clear. Here it says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Now I want to share with you about uh, King uh, Saul. We all know uh, King Saul, the first uh, king of uh, Israel. I just want to look at uh, 1 Samuel 15. Just to emphasize uh, how it is one thing to say that I love God and yet disobey His commands. If you turn with me to uh, 1 Samuel 15, verse uh, 3, I hope you read the whole chapter on your own. Now go attack the Amalekites and listen there. Uh, and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. Now here God 
is instructing uh, King Saul through our prophet Samuel. He says, go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy. Remember, totally destroy. That is the instruction that God gives to uh, King Saul. After attacking, after, after defeating the Amalekites. Verse 9. But Saul and the army spared. Verse uh, 3. God's instruction was totally destroyed. But verse 9. But Saul and the army spared Aga and the best of the sheep and cattle. Now God's instruction was totally destroyed. But here, he did not obey God's command. He uh, spared the life uh, of the king, and the Bible tells us, and the best of the sheep and the cattle, the fat calves and the lambs, everything that was good. God said, totally destroyed. So King Saul was uh, selective. He chose all that was uh, good and he kept them. He would not spare the life of uh, the king whom he should have uh, killed. And uh, he, uh, go on, uh, verse uh, 9, the last uh, line. But everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. So they felt this is not good. Okay, this uh, cattle has got some problem. So all that they found was not good, they destroyed. And all that was good, they kept. Not good, destroyed, good, they kept. God's command was to destroy totally. Verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. Verse 11, I am grieved. Now, God was grieved. Because uh, he had actually made uh, uh, Saul, the king, instead of uh, carrying out the instruction that was given to him, clear instruction, he deliberately disobeyed. He says, I am grieved that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. That, that's what I said. Now, it is one thing to... Uh, uh, say I love Jesus. It is entirely another thing to keep obey His commands. Now it could be it, could, it, it, it sometimes it's easy to keep God's commands within the four walls of the church, and can be very 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 challenging to keep God's command in our working place. Sometimes it can even be very very challenging. To keep the commands of Jesus even within our family life. So it can be very challenging. But God is very clear. If you obey, if you love me, you will keep my commands. That's what Jesus said. And here, God was very, very disappointed with uh, King uh, Saul. He says, uh, Has not carried out my instructions. Will you please uh, turn to uh, verse 20. Now uh, Samuel confronts uh, Saul and uh, how Saul defends himself. He says, uh, but I did obey the Lord. Verse 19. Uh, Saul, Samuel was very straightforward. He said, uh, why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you not obey the Lord? And uh, God was very grieved. God was grieved. And when uh, Samuel confronted him, Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? Why did you not obey the Lord? What was the response of uh, Samuel? Instead of uh, admitting that he had disobeyed, now he was trying to find uh, excuses like Adam and Eve. 
they could have just admitted that they, this, that they had disobeyed. And they were just uh, pointing to each other. And here, we are told that uh, Saul said, but I did obey. As I pointed out earlier, God's instruction was very clear. Total destruction. And Samuel comes and sees him face to face and says, how come you did not obey the Lord? And this guy has the cheek, has the guts to argue with uh, Samuel. He said, I did obey. Samuel says, you did not obey. He says, I did obey. And he tries to give, uh, it, 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 then he justifies. Saul said, I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. Praise God, he did uh, go on the mission. I completely destroyed the Amalekites. Did he completely destroy? No. He spared the life of uh, King uh, Ahab. So which means uh, he did not completely uh, obey. And brought back uh, Agab their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord their God. Did God ask them to do that? Did God uh, tell uh, Saul, go, invade, and bring the best and offer them as sacrifices to me? God did not ask him. But now he's trying to get uh, justify why he did not totally obey the instructions that, was, that were given to him by God through uh, Samuel. Now, I have come across uh, uh, a lot of uh, people who try to justify. Now, uh, we say, uh, I I'll give you one example. I won't say justify, I want to give a, a, a positive uh, uh, example. During my studies uh, in uh, Malaysian uh, Baptist uh, Seminary, now, uh, 10 years ago. There was a couple who were studying with me. Uh, the husband uh, was a BMW salesman. And the wife, uh, she owned, uh, she was not working, she owned a pharmacy. And uh, when uh, God uh, called uh, them, when they felt that God was calling them to become uh, missionaries, the husband uh, resigned as a BMW salesman. So he, he, he shared me, he said, uh, you know, Edward, I have driven every, every model of BMW. I owned one BMW. And the wife, she sold a pharmacy. She just sold that business. And then they came to study and uh, to go as missionaries. Now, to go as missionaries is very different because you do not know where God is going to take you. You do not know who is going to sponsor you, support you. You don't know whether you're going to have uh, the comfort that you have experienced all these uh, past years. But because they found that God was calling them, they just uh, gave up all their comfort, all the luxuries that they were enjoying in life. And they were young couple. They were not old people who were retiring or retired. Young people, young couple. They said, God has called. That is total obedience. Now, when sometimes, when sometimes God calls us to do something, now we can, uh, also, we can uh, totally uh, obey and say, God, I am willing to take up my cross and follow you. Wherever you go, wherever you ask me to go, I will go. Whatever you want me to give up, I will give up. Because you are my God. I will obey you. Hundred percent. But sometimes, you know, they, very interesting, uh, they say, the soldiers took the ship. I'm not sure if uh, King Saul gave in the pressure. 
I also come across uh, uh, people when uh, they know that they know very clearly that uh, God is calling them to either full-time ministry or God is uh, calling them to do certain things. But then because of uh, peer pressure or family pressure, I've heard excuses like, no, you can do what you're doing now and uh, also serve the church. Now, yeah, it's, uh, you can. There's no, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But sometimes when God calls uh, an individual for full-time ministry, then God says, I want you total. I'm, I don't want your money. I've got more than enough money. Every bank in this uh, earth belongs to me. I don't need the money, but I want you. I want you to follow me because I've designed a plan for you. And I want you to be a blessing to others. But sometimes because of peer pressure, family pressure, we are not able to totally surrender ourselves to God. And sometimes we may even deny. We say we can use Bible verses to justify. But deep down we know, God is calling me. It's either I listen to God, obey God's command, and follow Him, take up my cross and follow Him, or I just submit to the, the precious pressure of this world that might come through friends or even through our relatives or simply because of my love for the things of this uh, world. Now God was very, very disappointed. God said, total destruction. And that's why Jesus says, you want to follow? If you love me, you must keep my commands. Hundred percent. And he thought, he can buy God over. He thought uh, Samuel would be impressed by his discretion, his rationals. But here we have one of the most beautiful words in the Bible. Verse 22. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Does the Lord delight in, our, my, in my tithes and offerings? as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord. So it is God is not against uh, uh, these uh, sacrifices. God is not against uh, offerings and uh, uh, tithe. These are all encouraged. They should come as an expression of our obedience to God, not as a substitute. I repeat, when I give my offering, my tithe, this should be an expression of obedience to God's word, not as a substitute for not obeying God's uh, command. Many people give tithe and offering as a form of substitute. They think that they can offer all this and God will uh, tone down and see what uh, Samuel has got to say. As much as in obeying the voice of the Lord, he says, uh, God is not interested in all your sacrifices. As much as in obeying the voice of the Lord. And what it, what it says about uh, uh, disobedience. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed is better than the fat ram, fat of the rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination. And arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Now, it's a very interesting uh, case study of how one can think that they are actually doing a favor for God when they are not actually doing a favor for God. Now, we all know what we should be doing. Now, we don't need to uh, listen uh, again and again and again about the need to love our neighbor, to be kind, to be forgiving, to be compassionate, 
to seek the lost. We all know all the sex. It's not that we don't know. Sometimes we just pretend as though we don't know. We have never heard. Now, the instruction to Samuel was very simple. Total destruction, which means total obedience. But he decided to do, use his own discretion. He used his own rationals. And he did not obey. He rebelled against God. When you use your own rationals, discretions, and choose not to obey the word of the Lord, then you have rebelled against God. Don't tell me that uh, you, we cannot stand before God and say, so and so said. I believed in uh, what I heard on the YouTube. But God will say, I'm not interested in your YouTube. I'm not interested in uh, your WhatsApp. I'm not interested in uh, uh, so and so. But I gave you my word. My word was very clear. And you chose deliberately not to obey my command. We cannot justify and uh, very soul was rejected. So my dear friends, are you prepared to obey the command of God? If you love Him, if you truly love Him, you'll make every attempt to obey God's command. You'll make every attempt to mold your life. You'll make, take every step to lead a life in accordance to the word of God. It doesn't matter what people say, what people think. It all matters what God thinks of us. Trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. God bless you, my friends. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.